that's what I like. I'm gonna try to slow down and read to be sure that you understand what I want to tell you today. So, as I said, I'm here to share my personal story with you. And through my personal story, I wanna talk to you about two things. One, the contribution of Spain to the independence of the United States, and in particular, to our Spanish hero, Bernardo de Galve, this guy. And two, our role as US citizen, citizens in our democratic system. So, and my goal today is to give you very little but enough information about Bernardo de Galve for you to Google him, learn a little bit more, share the information that you get with your family and friends, but more important than anything, my goal is for you to ask yourselves, what can I do to spread the message about, about the contribution of Spain to the independence of the United States? So, first of all, let me introduce you to our hero. <coughs> this is Bernardo de Galve, okay? He really looks like a 18th century guy. <laughs> So Bernardo de Galve was born in Macharavilla, a very difficult name, huh? And Macharavilla is a village of Malaga, and Malaga is a city in the south of Spain. Let's find Macharavilla in the map. So we, I make a big map, North America here. We have here, this is Africa and Europe. And I made a circle where Spain is in the map. And I put a bigger map of Spain here. So this is Spain. The south of Spain is called Andalusia. And I made a bigger picture here of Andalusia. This tiny little dot is called Malaga. This is the city where Bernardo de Galvez was born. This is the Mediterranean Sea. Well, a village of Malaga City, that's where our hero was born. Do you know Antonio Banderas? Do you? <coughs> or Pablo Picasso? The artist, Pablo Picasso, good, good. Well, Antonio, did you ever see uh, Spy Kids? Yeah. yeah. Yeah? And a SpongeBob out of water? Yeah. I did too. Well, the pirate and the father of the Spy Kids was Antonio Banderas, and he's a famous act actor. And well, Antonio Banderas and Pablo Picasso are two famous people that were also born in Malaga City, where in Malaga, where Bernardo de Galvez was born. <coughs> Galvez had a brilliant military career that started when he was only 16 years old. And at the age of 30, he was very young, so he, how, this is how brilliant his career was, that at the age of 30, he became governor of Louisiana. What we know now as Louisiana, in the 18th century, belonged to Spain. Now I'm gonna need your help, guys. I'm gonna need your help because I need you to use your imagination and picture the 18th century, remember when he was living, when he was uh, governor of Louisiana, I need you to imagine the 18th century but with cell phones and social media. Imagine that we have George Washington with an iPhone, or Benjamin Franklin with a cell phone, or our hero with Google Glasses. Can you picture them? Okay, because I need you to do that. With that scenario in mind, remember, let's travel all together to the 18th century, okay? Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, let's go. We are in America. The colonies belong to England. The war is imminent. The Continental Congress, uh, the colonies, the Continental Congress is furious, and the colonies want to be independent from England. A conversation through Facebook is happening between uh, the, um, the people from the colonies that are also called patriots, their leader, George Washington, and the British. Ready? Okay. Patriots. Hey, British, we're kind of tired of you. We want the independence. British. Ha, no, we 
Broadway, Jose. <laughs> George Washington. Hey, British, I'm George, and I represent the Patriots. FYI, we're pissed. Do you think taxation without representation is fair? British. Hmm. George Washington. Huh. <laughs> British. You get what you get and you don't get upset. <laughs> George Washington. Okay, guys. We declare war. You are so toasted. British. What? Are you crazy? George Washington. You get what you get and you don't get upset. <laughs> Patriots, George, dude, now what? We're in so much trouble. George Washington, guys, keep calm and be cool. We just need the help from France and Spain, and we will be independent. France, okay, we're on board. Spain, you're gonna have to wait, George. We're having some IT issues here. We'll back to you soon. You got it, huh? <laughs> okay. Meanwhile, while all this drama was going on, we're going to talk now what's, what's, what's happening in the South. So we have here this pink area where the colonies, can you see it from here? Sorry. From the these were the colonies. This was <coughs> British territory, and all of this was Spanish territory. Okay? So, um, in the English territory, there were three strategic points that were very important for what we're gonna talk about. So these three points that belong to England were the Lower Mississippi River, these two were the Lower Mississippi River, Mobile and Pensacola. Do you know these cities? Mobile, Pensacola, now they're in Florida? Okay. So. These three points were key for England because the Mississippi River was the entrance, and here we have the Mississippi. The Mississippi was the entrance for the supplies to go, that were coming from Europe, to the supplies to go to the colonies. So the British fleet controlled the Atlantic coast. We have here the, all this, the, the strong um, fleet, uh, British fleet controlled the, the Atlantic coast. And they also control the Mississippi River, th thanks to these uh, strategic points. With this situation, England had the power over the colonies because the colonies could not get the supplies, uh, the resources that they need to fight the British. For the war, the colonies needed money, supplies, uniforms, blankets, weapons, ammunition, etc., from Europe. George Washington <coughs> knew that defeating the British on the coast, oh, where did I go? Sorry. George Washington knew that defeating the coast was impossible because of the strength of the, of the British fleet. The best chance to win the war was get the supplies from the south here, and up to, to the Mississippi. And this is why George Washington knew that without Spain, they couldn't succeed. While all the drama was, go was going on in the North, in the South, British and Spanish live in harmony. Perfect uh, harmony, like, oops, like the, like the, like the song. Let's keep going. So that, that situation changed, that harmony changed. When Bernardo de Galvez, governor of Louisiana, remember, received a Facebook message from King of, uh, sorry, from the King of Spain, Charles III. Let's see what they say to each other, okay? King, hey Bernardo, what's up? I hope Louisiana is treating you well. We miss you here in Spain. By the way, I have news for you. I just declared war on England. Godly. <laughs> OMG, King. I just had lunch with some of them. Are we now enemies? Really? Really? King. Yep, sorry. You get what you get. And you don't get upset. 
Please conquer the Lower Mississippi River, Mobile and Pensacola for the colonies ASAP. Galvez, he, yeah, sure, huh? Why don't I conquer the moon too? Mm -hmm. King, no yet. For the moon, we're gonna have to wait 200 years. <laughs> Bernardo, what? Eh? Okay, King, whatever. But just to let you know, I can tell you that this is not going to be easy. <coughs> King, Bernardo, I know. That's why I'm trusting you. You are the best, dude. And by the way, as FYI, our friend George says that France is not enough and they need us to win the war. Well, after this conversation with the king, Galvez followed orders and only him, only <coughs> Galvez, could lead a difficult task like that one. Galvez took the lower Mississippi River, Mobile and Pensacola for the colonies in battles with more action than Transformers, mm -hmm, Xbox Call of Duty, mm -hmm, <laughs> and Harry Potter combined. Wow, mm -hmm. wow I know. <laughs> After Bernardo de Galvez's victories, the colonies got the supplies they needed and they finally won the independence war. For his victories <coughs> and help to the colonies, the Continental Congress was so, so grateful to Bernardo de Galvez that they passed a resolution in 1783 where they resolved to accept a portrait of Bernardo de Galvez and hang it where Congress meets. And up to here, I told you about history. Okay, let me explain to you. This is the original text of the, the, the resolution from 1783. And they say, the Congress resolved, um, the Congress accept a portrait of Bernardo de Galvez, late governor of Louisiana. And the Congress also resolved, the same to be placed in, in, in the room in which Congress meets. And th that text, is this report is, is in the paper of the Continental Congress, number 19, fifth folio 195. That, by the way, I have um, handouts for you, and the text of this uh, historic resolution, you have a copy for each one of you. <laughs> um, 231 <coughs> years after this document, <coughs> which is in 2014, I found out through an article in Spain that this resolution was never fulfilled. I was surprised because I know that in America, we care about our heroes and we recognize their work. So I decided that I had to fix this. What do you do when you, as a citizen, when you want Congress to do something. Well, the first step is to talk to your congressman. And that's what I did. Mm -hmm. I'm here in Congress with my, I live in Bethesda in Maryland. So my congressman is uh, um, Chris Van Hollen. So I'm with him here. I told him about what I wanted to fix. And he said that he was going to help me. So I spent more than six months working with his team, preparing my case to present to the art committee of the House of Representatives. After reviewing my case, they recommended to hand the portrait in a temporary exhibit. I didn't like that option because um, I wanted a permanent exhibit as the resolution stands. Then what I did, uh, I went since the House of Representatives, they resolved just a temporary, and didn't like it, I went to the Senate. And in the Senate, I found support <coughs> from Senator Robert Menendez from New Jersey, he, who was interested in my case. After many months, many months of hard work, um, the Senator accepted the portrait of Bernardo de Gal Galvez to Cange where Congress meets. Three months ago, on December 9, 2014, we had the unveiling ceremony of the portrait of Bernardo de Galvez in the Capitol. 
in the Foreign Affairs Committee meeting room of the Senate. And that day, I finally closed that chapter of our country's history. So I am here in, in, the, in the Senate. These are um, leaders of the city of Malaga. This is the Senator Robert Menendez. This is me. This is the Spanish ambassador. This is the mayor of the tiny little town where Macharabiaya, where Bernardo de Galvez was born. And this one is your senator from uh, Virginia, Tim Kaine. Do you know him? Mm -hmm. yeah. OK. So this is your, your senator. I am here with your senator, Tim Kaine. This is my uh, this is me, my husband, Donald Foley, and my three beautiful kids, Pablo, Lucas, and Lucia. That, by the way, they are drinking um, no wine, cranberry juice. Because people ask me, oh, are they drinking wine? No, they were toasted with cranberry juice. <laughs> <laughs> After the Ambeli ceremony, it was very interesting. That's why I'm putting this, I, I'm showing you this picture, because I had an interview with CBS with Senator Menendez. I was very nervous, but it was cool. It was a cool experience. So it took me almost two years of hard work. I poured over history records, visited congressional offices, even I spoke with the president of Spain, Mariano Rajoy, in January 2014. I had more than 150 appearances in the media, newspapers, TV, conferences, radio, Facebook, Twitter, etc. I got the friend the front page and back page of the Washington Post style section. Now, by the way, you have an, uh, a copy in your handout. You have a copy of this article. I was determined to see that the promise of our founding fathers was fulfilled. They are, days after the ceremony of the Ambelin ceremony, <coughs> President Obama signed a resolution giving the honorary citizenship to Bernardo de Galve. This is an honor given to only seven people in the history of our country. One of the handouts that you, you, you're gonna receive, that you have, is, the, is an article of Roll Call. Roll Call is a newspaper of the Congress. And it's talking about this resolution that Obama signed. I think this article is interesting because they mentioned that the work I did bolstered the process of the resolution. That tells us that the effort of just one citizen can push, influence, and educate our leaders about a law and make it happen. I asked our Congress to do something. They listened to me. And they proved I was right when I said, we Americans, Keep our promises. We care about our heroes and friends. We know how hard it was to get our freedom and how hard it is to preserve it. We do not forget our bodies. There are many organizations who supported my work. The Daughters and Sons of the American Revolution, for example, here in the United States. But as Americans, we owe a debt of gratitude to the non-profit, the Asociación Bernardo de Galvez in Malaga, where he was born. And in particular, to its vice president, this man, Manuel Olmedo Checa. He's the real hero of this uh, story. Manuel discovered and made public the historic records about the resolution and the unfulfilled promise. The, aso the association also donated the painting of Bernardo de Galvez to the people of the United States that is hanging today in uh, that is hanging in the Senate today. I wouldn't have done this without their work, which proves to us that Spain was our, our friend before and is our friend today. Let me share with you a beautiful story about Malaga, the city of Malaga, the city of Bernardo de Galvez. This is Malaga Cathedral. What do you see here in this picture that is, that is missing, that is wrong? What it is? What are we missing in this picture? A tower, isn't it? 
It's a tower. Do you know why we're, we're missing a, to a tower here? Let me tell you about this story. When the construction of this tower was going to take place in the 18th century, <coughs> Spain declared the war on England. The people of Malaga donated the budgeted money of, for, of the tower to help the war against England. The tower was never built, and this helps us to remember the generosity of this city with our country. Inter interesting facts about Bernardo de Galve. There is a, a, a Bernardo de Galvez statue in Washington, D.C. It is behind the State Department building in downtown, a few blocks away from, um, from Foggy Bottom Metro Station. Do you know the city of Galveston in Texas? Do you? Good. Well, the city of Galveston was named after Galvez, Bernardo de Galvez. <laughs> eh, the village of Macharabiaya in Malaga, where Bernardo de Galvez was born, they celebrate our 4th of July. They celebrate the Independence Day. And they have a reenactment of the Independence War. They have a party, fireworks. They raise our American flag, and they sing our national anthem. Another interesting fact about Bernardo de Galvez is that he died in Mexico. His body is buried in San Fernando's church, but his heart was taken from his body and was taken to the National Cathedral of Me Me Mexico, the city of Mexico. As I said at the beginning of my presentation, my goal today was to give you very little but enough information about Bernardo de Galvez for you to Google him. Learn a little, little bit more. Share the information with your uh, family and friends, but more important than anything, ask yourselves, what can I do to spread the message of the um, contribution of Spain to the independence of the United States? <coughs> I hope uh, we have time for some questions. And if you want further information, your teacher has my um, um, email address. And I also have a Facebook page called Bernardo de Galve. And um, I want to, um, let me see, there's something else. Another handout that you have is a replica of the thank you card that I sent to the members of Congress who helped me. And I want you to have one because I want to thank you for your attention and for allowing me to share my experience with you. As we, it has been an honor. Thank you. But now we have, um, I have two t-shirts to raffle with you.